Shalom, my name is Charlie Brown, and I'll be reading to you the portion of Bereshit from the Tree of Life version. Genesis chapter one, creation in six days. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was chaos and waste. Darkness was on the surface of the deep, and the Ruach Elohim was hovering upon the surface of the water. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good. So God distinguished the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So there was evening and there was morning one day. Then God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the water. Let it be for separating water from water. So God made the expanse and it separated the water that was below the expanse from the water that was above the expanse. And it happened so. So God called the expanse sky. So there was evening and there was morning a second day. And then God said, let the water below the sky be gathered upon one place and let the dry ground appear. And it happened so. God called the dry ground land and the collection of the water he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land sprout grass, green plants, yielding seed, fruits, trees, making fruit, each according to their species with seed in it upon the land. And it happened so. The land brought forth grass, green plants yielding seed, each according to its species, and trees making fruit with a seed in it, each according to its species. And God saw that it was good. So there was evening, and there was morning, a third day. Then God said, let lights in the expanse of the sky be for separating the day from the night. They will be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. They will be for the lights in the expanse of the sky to shine upon the land. And it happened so Then God made the two great lights, the greater light for dominion over the day and the lesser light as a well of the stars for dominion over the night. And God set them into the expanse of the sky to shine on the land and to have dominion over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So there was evening and there was morning a fourth day. And then God said, let the water swarm with swarms of living creatures. Let flying creatures fly above the land across the expanse of the sky. Then God created the large creatures, sea creatures, and every living creature that crawls with which the water swarms according to their species, as well as every winged flying creature according to their species. And God saw that it was good. And then God blessed them by saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the water in the seas. Let the flying creatures multiply on the land. So there was evening and there was morning, a fifth day. Then God said, let the land bring forth living creatures according to their species, livestock, crawling creatures, wild animals, according to their species. And it happened so. God made the wild animals according to their species, the livestock according to their species, and everything that crawls on the ground, each according to its species. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, let them rule over the fish of the sea, over the flying creatures of the sky, over the livestock, over the whole earth, and over every crawling creature that crawls on the land. And God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the land and conquer it, rule over the fish of the sea, the flying creatures of the sky, and over every animal that crawls on the land. And then God said, I have just given you every green plant yielding seed that is on the surface of the whole land, and every tree which has the fruit of a tree yielding seed. They are to be food for you. Also, for every wild animal, every flying creature of the sky and every creature that crawls on the land, which has life, every green plant, it's to be food for you. And it happened so. So God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. So there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Genesis chapter two, Shabbat for rest. So the heavens and the earth were completed among, along with their entire array, and God completed on the seventh day his work that he made, and he ceased on the seventh day from all his work that he made. And then God blessed the seventh day, and he sanctified it. 
for he ceased from all his work that God created for the purpose of preparing. And these are the genealogical records of the heavens and the earth when they were created at the time when Adonai Elohim made land and sky. Now no shrub on the field was in the land yet and no green plants on the field had sprouted yet for Adonai Elohim had not created it, caused it to rain upon the land and there was no one to work the ground, but a mist came up from the land and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then Adonai Elohim formed man out of the dust. From the ground, he breathed into his nostrils a breath of life. So the man became a living being. And then Adonai Elohim planted a garden in Eden in the east. And there he put the man who he had formed. Then Adonai Elohim caused to sprout from the ground every tree that was desirable to look, to look at and good for food. Now the tree of life was in the middle of the garden and also the tree of knowledge of good and evil. A river flowed out of the Eden to water the garden. From there, it divided and became four river heads. The first was the Pishon, the other, the one that winds around the whole land of the Havilah, where there is gold. The gold of that land is good. Bedilam and Lapis, Lazuli stones are also there. The land of the second river is Gihon. It winds around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Tigris. It runs east of Assyria. And then fourth river is the Euphrates. Then Adonai Elohim took the man and gave him rest in the Garden of Eden in order to cultivate and watch over it. Then Adonai Elohim commanded the man saying, from all the trees of the garden, you are most welcome to eat. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you must not eat. For when you eat from it, you most assuredly will die. Then Adonai Elohim said, it is not good for man to be alone. Let me make a, a well-matched helper for him. Adonai Elohim had formed from the ground every animal of the field and every flying creature of the sky. So he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called them, each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock and to the flying creatures of the sky and to all the animals of the field. But for the man, he did not find a well-matched helper for him. Adonai Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh of its place. Adonai Elohim built the rib, which he had taken from the man into a woman. And then he brought her to the man. Then the man said, this one at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one is called woman, from, for from man was taken this one. This is why man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. Now both of them were naked, and the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Genesis chapter 3. But the serpent was shrewder than any of the other animals in the field of the Adonai Elohim had made. So it said to woman, did God really say you must not eat from the trees of the garden? The woman said to the serpent, of the fruit of the trees we may eat, but the fruit of this tree, which is in the middle of the garden, God said, you must not eat of it and you must not touch it or you will die. The serpent said to the woman, you most assuredly won't die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes are going to be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was the thing of lust from the eyes and that the tree was desirable for imparting wisdom. So she took of its fruit and she ate. She also gave her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made for themselves loin coverings. And they heard the sound of Adonai Elohim coming in to and fro in the garden in the wind of the day. So the man of his wife hid himself from the presence of Adonai Elohim in the midst of the tree of the garden. Then Adonai Elohim called to the man and he said, where are you? Then he said, your sound, I heard it in the garden and I was afraid, but I am naked and I hid myself. Then he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree from which I commanded you not to eat? Then the man said, the woman who you gave me to be with, she gave me the tree and I ate it. 
Adonai Elohim said to the woman, what did you do? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. Adonai Elohim said to the serpent, because you did this, cursed are you above all the livestock and above every animal of the field on your belly, you will go and dust you will eat all the days of your life. I'll put animosity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He will crush your head and you will crush his heel. To the woman, he said, I will greatly increase your pain from conception to labor. In pain, you will give birth to children and your desire will be towards your husband. Yet he must rule over you. Then the man, he said, because you listened to your wife's voice and ate the tree from which I commanded you, saying you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. With pain, you'll eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles will sprout for you. You will eat the plants of the field but the by the sweat of your brow. Will you eat food until you return to the ground? Since from it you were taken, from you, for you are dust, and to dust you will return. He stretched out his hand and takes also from the tree of life and eats and lives forever. Adonai Elohim sent him away from that which he had been taken, and he expelled the man and at the east of the garden of Eden. He had cherubim dwell among, along with the whirling swords of flame to guard the way of the tree of life. Genesis chapter four. Now the man had relations with Eve, his wife, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. And she said, I produced man with Adonai. Then she gave birth again and his brother Abel. Abel became a shepherd of flocks while Cain became a worker of the ground. So it happened from after some time that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to Adonai, while Abel, he also brought the firstborn of his flock and their fat portions. Now Adonai looked favorably upon Abel and his offering, but upon Cain and his offering, he did not look favorably. Cain became very angry and his countenance fell. And then Adonai said to Cain, why are you angry and why have your, your countenance fallen? If you do well, it will lift. But if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the doorway. It desire is for you, but you must master it. Cain spoke to Abel, his brother, while they were in the field. Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and he killed him. Then Adonai said to Cain, where's Abel, your brother? I don't know, he said. Am I my brother's keeper? Then he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. So now cursed are you from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. As often as you work the ground, it will not yield its crops to you again. You will be restless, wanderer on the earth. Cain said to Adonai, my iniquity is too great to bear. Since you expelled me today from the face of the ground, and I must be hidden from your presence, then I will be restless, wanderer on the earth. Anyone who finds me will kill me. But Adonai said to him, in that case, anyone who kills Cain to be avenged seven times over. So Adonai put a mark on Cain so that anyone who found him would not strike him down. Then Cain left Adonai's presence and dwelled in the land of wandering east of Eden. Cain was intimate with his wife and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. And he was a building a city and he named the city after the name of his son, Enoch. And, and to Enoch was born Irad. And Irad fathered Mehujael, and Mehujael fathered Methuselah, Methuselah, and Methuselah fathered Lamech. Now Lamech took for himself two wives. The name of the first one was Ada, and the name of the second one was Zila. Ada gave birth to Je Jabel. He was the pioneer of tent dwellers with livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the pioneer of all who skillfully handled stringed instruments and wind instruments. Now Zila also gave birth to Tubal Cain, the forger of every kind of bronze and iron tool. Tubal Cain's sister was Naama. Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zila, hear my voice. Lamech's wives, listen to my speech. For I have killed a man for wounding me and a boy for bruising me. If Cain is to be avenged seven times, then Lamech 77 times. Adam was intimate with his wife again, and she gave birth to a son, and she named him Seth. For God has appointed me another seed in place of Abel. 
since Cain killed him. So Seth also was born a son. He named him Enosh. Then people began to call on Adonai's name. Genesis chapter 5. This is the book of genealogies of Adam. When God created Adam in the likeness of God, he made him male and female. He created them and he blessed them and he called their names Adam. And when he created them, Ad Adam lived 130 years and then fathered his son in his likeness after his image and named him Seth. Then the days of Adam after he fathered Seth were 800 years and he fathered other sons and daughters. So all Adam's days that lived, he lived there 930 years and then he died. Seth lived 105 years and then fathered Enosh. Seth lived 807 years after he fathered Enosh and he fathered sons and daughters. And so all Seth's days were 912 years and then he died. Enosh lived 90 years and then fathered Kenan. Enosh lived 850 years after he fathered Canaan and he fathered sons and daughters. So all of Enosh's days were 905 years and then he died. Canaan lived 70 years, then fathered Mahalalel. Canaan lived 840 years after he follow, fathered <laughs> Mahalalel. He fathered sons and daughters. So all of Canaan, Canaan's days were 910 years, and then he died. Mahalalel lived 65 years, and then he fath fathered Jared. Mahalalel lived 830 years after he fathered Jared, and he fathered sons and daughters. So all of Mahalalel's days were 895 years, and then he died. Jared lived 162 years, and then he fathered Enoch. Jared lived 800 years after he fathered Enoch, and he fathered sons and daughters. So all of Jared's days were 962 years, and then he died. Enoch lived 65 years, and then fathered Methuselah. Now, Enoch walked with God continually for 300 years after he followed, fathered Methuselah, and he fathered sons and daughters, so all of Enoch's days were 365 years. And Enoch continually walked with God, and then he was not there because God took him. Methuselah lived 187 years and fathered Lamech, and Methuselah lived 782 years after he fathered Lamech, and he fathered other sons and daughters. So all of Methuselah's days were 969 years, and then he died. Lamech lived 182 years, and he fathered a son. And he named him Noah, saying, This one will comfort us from our work and from the pain of our hands because of the ground which Adonai cursed. Lamech lived 595 years after he fathered Noah. And he fathered sons and daughters. So all of Lamech's days were 777 years. And then he died. And Noah was 500 years old when he fathered Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Genesis chapter 6. Now when humankind began to multiply on the face of the ground and the daughters were born to them, then the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were good and they took for themselves wives and they and they chose. Then Adonai said, my spirit will not remain with humankind forever since they are flesh. So their days will be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days. And also afterwards, whenever the sons of God came to the daughters of men and gave birth to them, those were the mighty men of old, men of renown. And then Adonai saw that the wickedness of humankind was great on the earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of their heart was only to evil, all the evil time. So Adonai regretted that he had made humankind on the earth and he, his heart was deeply pained. So Adonai said, I will wipe out man, humankind whom I have created from the face of the ground, from humankind to livestock, crawling things and the flying creatures of the sky, because I regret that I made them. But Noah found favor in Adonai's eyes.